All right, we're ready to get started on our motif patterns. I hope you're as excited as I am. So you should have already finished your five drawings that you need for this motif um, project. If you haven't, stop the video, find the video that explains motif patterns and how to go about starting your drawings and get those done and sent off to me or given to me. All right, so now that you have your minimum of five drawings, some of you may have slightly more, we're ready to get started on the motif drawing. So you can see I've kind of started here, but we're going to start from the very beginning. And here's how you do this. You can choose to follow along with me in the video with your drawings, or if you want to, you can just watch this video all the way through to see all the suggestions and tips that I'm going to give you. And then you can just work independently on your motif pattern. This is not a video lesson tutorial that you have to follow step by step by step and turn something into me, okay? This is just to get you started on your motif. You're not learning anything new here. This is just me giving you guidance on how I would approach the project. Okay, having said that, there is one slight new thing and you'll learn that here, it's pretty quick. So we need to start a new document. So we're gonna go up to File, New. Make sure that your units are set to inches, not points or picas, inches. And I want you to set it to 20 by 20 in inches and click OK. All right. So the first thing you have to do is you have to place your images in here. So we're going to go to File, Place. Here's where they are. You have given them to me or sent them in to me, and I have scanned them or have placed them in the appropriate folder. So you're going to go to Courses, Art, Print Shop scans in order to view them because you, some of you may be seeing them something like this in order to see the pictures you have to click on this little icon at the top and go to extra large icons i will also try to label the file when they scan them in or upload them uh, with your first name okay so that might make it easier so i'm gonna i know mine's at the bottom so i'm just gonna scroll and remember we're going to file place not open file place and now we have our sketches here. So a couple things I wanna point out, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. So remember earlier when I introduced this project to you, I said you need to be very careful to make sure that your lines are nice and thick and dark and black and they connect. See how this one does not connect here? It's gonna, there's gonna be an issue and you're gonna see it. Also see that it doesn't connect here and you've got some light areas here. You're gonna see why this is a problem. Okay, so now that you've got it placed, and you may have more than one document, okay? If you have five different drawings on five different pieces of paper, you're gonna have to go back to file, place for each one of those. Okay, so like you'd have another one and you'd have to place that one, all right? I only have one, I did all five of mine on one. All right, next step is to click on it, you have to select it, and then you're gonna go to object, image trace, make and expand. Click OK to this box. It's going to take a little bit because what Illustrator is doing is it's literally trying to identify nice dark black lines and trace them. So now we look closely, look what happens. It couldn't find some of those and it left the break in some of those. Here's why this is going to be a problem. So right now this is one big grouped object. Okay, I need to ungroup it so I can delete some things and, and move some things around. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. Now I'm gonna just click off and I wanna click on the white space around the outside and hit delete. Now I've got individual objects, but be careful because they are literally individual objects. Instead, what I would do while you're organizing is I would kind of click and drag and group each little object kind of by themselves. So I'm just clicking and dragging, grouping, moving them, clicking and, oops, see I grabbed too many there. just so it's easier for me to move things around, All right? So see what happened here because I had that break. So when I hit the delete on the white space, it deleted everything here. So there's a couple things you can do if this is an issue. The first thing you can do is just contact me, email me, and I can clean it up in Photoshop and resend you another file so you can place it again. Um, or you can just be like, well, I'm gonna have to hand paint this thing. Um, instead of clicking because for the rest of these all you have to do to add color is you click on it and you click on your fill option now you're going to see something weird happen here probably see how it turned gray and i'll show you again with a brighter color i'm trying to pick purple here it's not turning purple here's why 
because we placed a black and white file, Illustrator thinks we're going to be working in black and white from now on. So if you look up here in the color panel, it's got it set at black and white. It's really simple. All you have to do is click up here to the drop down and change it from grayscale to CMYK and your color will come back. Now it might take a couple times to do that. It takes a while for the computer. See, it's still set it back as gray. If once you do that two or three times, it should hopefully start to um, fix itself. But if not, again, do it a few times. Eventually, it should get the idea. All right. Another thing that will help is once you add one or two pieces of color, if you save this and then you can always close it, reopen, it will then be a CMYK file rather than a grayscale file. Okay, speaking of saving, you do need to make sure you save this. So file, save as. You need to save it in your folder. Um, you should hopefully have a folder, a print shop folder for the class, and then you can either save it in a projects folder or just anywhere. I would call this file motif pattern just so that you can find it. But if you want to give it another name, like maybe I would call this coffee because that would make sense. Okay. So. We've got all of our objects here. I'm going to click on my other file because I've already got a head start. So from here, you're just going to start coloring. I'm going to disregard that for a second. So you're coloring all of your stuff. You're clicking on it. I can change my color. I can even change the outline color. You can see here, like I made this one white, I made this one blue. You can use the paint tool. I can maybe add some stuff. Maybe I wanted to add, ooh, I want to do some more swirls here. Maybe I want to do a little, little accent, little highlight there. However, notice I can do some fun things where I didn't want to color in the line. So this is where I said that you can fill things in from scratch. So I'm going to click back on here. Remember I said you can fill this in. Yeah, so you would have to grab, grab the paintbrush tool. Drag it a little bit bigger here. And you would have to hand paint that in. You can't just click on the fill option and fill it in because you have a break in the line. And then what you would just do is I would click on that and I would go to my arrange and send to back. So it's just behind the black lines there. So you can see here in mine, I got experimental and I just kind of was like, oh, I'm going to paint outside the lines. I even played around here with a, there's a gradient on the inside of this coffee cup. You can have as much fun as you want. You can go crazy. The only thing you cannot do is you cannot fill something with a pattern. So let me show you what I mean by that. So some of you have already discovered there is a, um, option for patterns. So if you click in up here, if you go to your library, oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, there is a patterns fill option where you can fill in, which these are kind of fun and cool, but don't do that with this motif pattern because when you go to pattern maker, it won't work. You can't do a pattern within a pattern. You can do a you can do it if you use a gradient or if you do some of these other kind of fun things with like a brush tool or whatever, but you can't do it with um, you can't do it with a pattern within a pattern. Okay. So you're gonna add your color, you're gonna have some fun, you can resize things. You could also be like, ugh, that I actually don't like it. I'm just gonna delete that thing. I don't want to use it. You can make copies, like I decided I want more of these beans, so I made a bunch of little copies, okay? So you're gonna take your time, you're gonna resize things the way you want to, and then you need to design, rearrange them as a tile. So this is my tile. This is what I want it to repeat as. So I've arranged it, I've made it look all good, I've organized it the way I want to, all of my colors are just so I got my color scheme and I'm ready to turn this into a pattern. So this is where it's super simple because it's just pattern maker. Um, so now I'm gonna click and drag to select it, object, pattern, make. It's just like before, okay? It's, it's just like um, when you did the geometric patterns, I can do this brick, I can do it, um, the hexagon pattern, I can shrink the space between them. Okay. Um, and then I hit done whenever 
I'm done with it. To apply it, okay, to apply it, you click and drag your box, you fill it. Now remember, I can still fine tune this if I'm like, oh, those are kind of big. I want them a little bit smaller. All you have to do is double click on the swatch. See where it says new pattern too? I'm just going to double click and it's going to open this up. I can make changes. I can be like, oh, I actually want that to be a different color. Maybe I'm going to ungroup that for a second. So I can grab my blue and I want to make it this god awful yellow color. It knows how it changes it everywhere. I can maybe resize this. Maybe if I want to move it in a little bit, I don't like how it's centered there. I can make it bigger and see how it updates. And then all you have to do is click done. And it will update. If I don't like it, I'm going to click cancel because I liked it better before. And then I'm done. Um, now, background color. We went over this before. If I want a background color, a different one, I'm going to click and drag. Object arrange, send to back. And here's where I can change that color. So I've got this nice background color. All right. Very last thing that you need to do before you're done with this project and send it off to me, this is really important, is I would save it just like this. So I would get, make sure you save it. When you are done, this is the final step. I want you to delete all the excess stuff that's out here. Get rid of all of this stuff. So it's all blank and it's just your pattern. I want you to save it one more time. This time, I want you to call it finished pattern. Save it. And then I want you to export it as a JPEG because I will need this finished file with it as a finished pattern. That's what I'll have to send off to the company for printing if you choose this one as your print. That's it. Have fun. A couple other things I'll, I'll, I'll say to you before I leave off is, again, you can add. These are your original drawings, but you can add more. If you want to go crazy and you're like, well, I really want to have the word coffee in here because there's some cool fonts. You guys have already kind of played around with fonts a little bit. And I'm going to use that. You can use type in with, let's just show you how it works a little bit. So if I were to use that in my pattern maker, notice that the type tool will also repeat. You could add extra little things in there. So if I'm like, well, I want to have more shapes, maybe I, I want to add the star tool in there. You can add extra things to your, to your drawing here. I'm blanking on my words. You know, you can get really experimental. Maybe you want to do some cool textures and other stuff. I want you to think outside the box and have a little, so now you see my little swish is back there. Have fun. I would try it with a couple different times. Every time you try something new with like colors or whatever, I would just save it under a different file name. And then when you're done and you have the one that you like the best, that's the one that you'll turn in for the grade later. But you have tons of time to get started on this. I'm going to give you several days to work on your motif painting. I want you to take your time. First step, Start placing those drawings, start coloring them, start adding all your little doodads and things you want to add to the pattern before you use that pattern maker. And if you have questions or comments, make sure you email me right away. Um, I hope you like this project as much as I do. I can't wait to see all the masks that we create out of this.